Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for turning up here this morning. It is my great, great honor to welcome you one and all to another fantastic edition of The Hello Show. Hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? Hello, I love you, let me jump in your game. Hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? Hello, I love you, let me jump in your game Sorry, I lost Thank you very much for that. Thank there. you very much. Thanks for coming. My name is Mark Isett. Uh, this is the so-called Hello Show. It's broadcast from the fair every day. And uh, we ask ourselves two questions up here. One is, what is the recipe for a really successful meeting? And the other one is, how does the meeting change in the future? And in order to do this, we talk to architects, we talk to designers, we talk to scientists, we even talk to the occasional gym teacher. And today's topic is, uh, is one that is called Everything But The Chair. What can one do to set the atmosphere of an office? Not using furniture. What can one do with uh, acoustics, lighting, plants, the air we breathe, music? Should every office possibly have what we have the privilege of having here, our very own organ slayer, Indy. Thank Take you, it away, Mark. Indy. What am I taking away? I don't know. Why well, don't you play something? Oh, okay. While I move to um, the chair. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. And I'll move really slowly. Are you at the chair now, right? I'm in the chair now. Okay. Thank you for that surprise introduction, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have two rather odd guests for you today, actually. One is a uh, gardener, and the other one is uh, something of a sound designer. Uh, she claims that she can point sound in a direction with such precision that it's almost like pointing a torch in the dark. But before we introduce her, here's the gardener, the Inna Vaklin. Welcome. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you very much. Tell us about uh, Greenworks, Green the company you Works. represent. Yes, that is the company I'm working with. I have two other colleagues, actually three other colleagues nowadays. We are working with uh, how to introduce plants, greenery into offices without using ordinary pots. This is to make more of it. This is to make more uh, feelings around the plants, not only have the traditional plants that, well, sometimes you not even notice them because you used to have them. So this is a way of, of surprising and to introduce the, the very, very healthy plants and to give a, a better effect of it. And it's really not just a pot of greenery, it's very much more than that. Yes, we try to, to uh, be able to introduce the plants in a way that is uh, more integrated to the office, but also give more surprises. Mm. And that could be to introduce the plants into a, a furniture. We've actually done desks, we've done reception desks and copy station desks, and we have had the plants sort of surrounding the desk. And we've done plant walls, of course, I mean, sort of nowadays quite traditional walls. Did we have any pictures? I think so, yes, yes, here we go. So the big one is a, a plant wall where the plants are introduced into the office and integrated into the water system and to the plumbing system. Uh, so this is really installed and it, it stays there, can stay there for, for a long time. And what you see are the, the, on my left side, which will be the left side here for you as well, is a mobile plant wall, and that is something that you can 
roll in and place between office desks, for example, or at the cafe or coffee corner, whatever. And, and where is the water in that one? That is in the tank. You can see something white underneath the plants, okay. and, and in that there is the water, and then there is the pump, pumping up the water and spreading it out through a felt. Okay. Uh, so and, and in that case, you can, you can really use it wherever you want to have the greenery. And next to that one is a lamp, is, um, as you see, a, a pendant globe uh, made of plexiglass and with a lamp and with plants planted into it uh, in a volcano stone. So they can be there for quite a while, three weeks actually, without being watered. Okay. And after that comes uh, what we've been inspired by, a television. So it's the same sizes, one meter and 70 centimeters high. And it's a green screen, as we call it. And it's the same thing with that one as the first one. You have the water in a tank underneath, and it pumps up the water and spreads it out through a felt. And the last picture is about what I told you about these desks that we've decorated with plants. This is actually from the postcode lottery in Stockholm. So it's really very recently installed. Five of these items were installed in that office. What gave you the idea? Of, of all this, yeah. Of all this, um, well, I'd say that the idea came to me when thinking about so many plants. Uh, I, mean, I was thinking about plants. I love plants, <coughs> <laughs> and uh, my first thing was that I wanted to be. I'm an economist from the beginning, actually. So, uh, and I've been working with with rooms and with uh, interior design and with ergonomics and and these aspects for a long time. And I was thinking of it, what a pity that we don't do anything outdoor, that we don't use plants, that we don't use the outdoor in front of an office, uh, in front of a company and, and saying hello in a way. So I, uh, I took on to this garden education. And while I was doing that, I had the opportunity to practice together with a guy called Michael Helgren, and he is doing plant walls. And I thought it was fantastic. I really love this way of planting. And while I was working with him, I thought that maybe it's very complicated to make all offices to have their own gardens outside the buildings. So maybe it's easier to, to, to get this with people being close to plants by taking in the plants instead. It would be much easier to have them outside, I would have thought. Yeah, but yeah, I, my, my first thought was to make all Chista into a garden. I mean, to have uh -huh. gardens outside the, the, the offices in Chista okay. and then make people go out and make it look beautiful. But I understood that... that Managers are not so into spending money outdoor. They think about their office space and they think about to decorate it nicely and, and really spend money on that. But outside the building, is not, it's not that common. So I, my idea was now to continue this by having people close to plants. So I was thinking about mm. taking them indoor instead and uh, making more of it. And, and what are the benefits of uh, having plants inside? It's, of course, I mean, the beauty of it. It's, it's fantastic. It's the aesthetics. But it is also the oxygen you get from the plants. I mean, they are breathing in there. And they're eating up the, 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 the poisonous things that we have in the air. I mean, it's a lot of, of different poisonous things coming from materials, coming from paint, coming from whatever you have, dust. Mm. And the plants are eating it, and they give us back the oxygen. So for, for those reasons. And also, because you water them, it, you, of course, you have... Uh, the, the not dampness, but you have some, some kind of wetness, I mean, around the, the plants that gives you a nicer air. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I suppose, rather invigorating to be watching something yes, that grows, grows, that you can see a development. That is really, when I was studying in, to, be, to become a gardener, I had the opportunity also to, to work together with um, a psychiatric uh, a person, so he is both. Uh, psychiatrist and both very interested into in the plant field and he introduced to me the the idea of that the real thing that touches you is the, the, the that you can see that it's growing that you can see that it's changing it's not dead it's it's really alive and that gives uh, you i mean comfort that you are alive and also uh, symbolically that the the company that you are visiting or working in is also a, a lively company is a company that is growing um, and that symbol is really, it's not only a symbol, I think it's really for real. It's, uh, let's think about spring, when you see that little shot coming up from, from the soil. <gasps> oh, once again, we will have this green, we will have, it will grow again. It, it really gives us a, a, a nice feeling, I think. I mean, uh, have you ever experienced, uh, have you had a customer uh, 
That is a customer that wants to give an ecological impression, but is really a bit like British Petroleum, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> something like that, that just wants to cover the, the bad the habits. bad habits. I could, I mean, you think, I, I was working with AstraZeneca together with this guy, Michael Helgen, when I was becoming a, a gardener. And in, in one sense, I mean, they, you could say, I mean, they, they're working with chemistry. They're really working with oh, mm. bad things when it comes out to the water and so. Mm. But on the other hand, they are researchers and in medicine. They are biologically, I mean, into that field in another way. So they have wonderful plant walls in their research department. It welcomes you 36 square meters of plants, which is uh, fantastic. So and it's also good for the staff going down there, sitting there, breathing, getting new energy. That is really a, a good thing that the, the management have given to them. But it is the at least something that you consider before taking on a job. I mean, who's the customer and what is their agenda? I mean, for postcode lottery, for example, they, they, I mean, you can think whatever you think about a lottery, you can think of the extremely commercial and, and you can have your, your thoughts about that, what I had. But on the other hand, the fact is that they are giving away money so, so to green projects, so, so why not? I mean, if they want to, to show that and symbolize that while you're coming in, why not? Mm. I think it's better than not doing it. <laughs> why has suddenly, it seems to me, offices become so important, that it's so important to take care of the employees in a different fashion today than it was just Before. 10 years ago? I think it is for, I mean, for economical reasons, as it is if you boil down to it, I mean, if you're running a company, I think it's very expensive to lose your staff, especially if you have management, I mean, and then to replace them, you go to a research, to a, a company that have to find a, a new one again. It, it's, it's huge costs to lose. So you really want to keep your staff, you really want to build their identity together with the company, and then you really want to give them a, a good working environment. And uh, greenery comes in as one thing, I think sound, I think, I mean, other nice furniture, to profile your company and to make people feel that they are worth it. Mm -hmm. That is what I found when I, I interviewed people at AstraZeneca, people really in the management level, and asked them about how they felt about working there and what, what they thought about these the greeneries and everything, and they felt that art and uh, these green installations, they felt, wor they felt that they were a lot worth, I mean, they, they, they felt that they have given this to us, they really trust us, they really want to, they want something good, mm. they want to comfort us, and they, so that is quite, quite easy, you could say, but, but really to show that you mean something, that okay. you want to give something. Maybe sound can work in the same way. Absolutely, mm. in the, absolutely. And mm. this is also, to finish this, uh, a sound absorbing effect with this. Okay. And then you can add whatever sound you want. Our next guest uh, creates sound, but she has also got the, uh, the technique that is needed to So please welcome <laughs> Vanda Andersson. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Tell us about Lexter. I love the fact that you introduced me almost like a magician. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you uh, are a bit of a magician, I'd I say. Nowadays, I am, after this introduction. Uh, Lexter is a company that works with sound design, and sound design in public environments, and for meeting spaces, and all sorts. So yeah, that's what we do. And we have, as you said, we have special kinds of techniques that enable sound to be produced and delivered in what we think is the right way in a public space. And, and where do you come from? Where, what, what, what's the background of the people working at Lexter? Well, Lexter, um, it comes from the sound production company. Uh, so originally, it stems from a pro production company that has been existing for about 14, 15 years. Okay. Uh, working with radio commercials, advertising, everything that has to do with sound. Uh, and then when that company started moving into public spaces, such as installations for museums, they realized that you needed special kind of technique in order to make it work in a very good way. Um, and they said that this is a completely different area, this is another business field, so that's how Lexter was founded. So they started to look for 
the kind of techniques, techniques that could be applied, and also a different kind of clientele and a different kinds of needs uh, that you have to fill in order to make sound in the public environment work. And the needs you have to fill then are what? You have to limit the, the, the sound to a specific point? It depends. It can be um, not necessarily every time. No. But there are different kinds of aspects that you have to think about when you add sound to a public environment. Because as you notice here, there are loads of people moving around. You already have an architecture that you have to sort of adjust to so that the sound doesn't spread everywhere, so that it doesn't become a disturbance for the people here. So at some points you use directional sound where you branch off the sound. So let's say that we could have a sound experience here, whereas the people in the audience would have a different one. And you wouldn't notice the difference until you move in between the spaces. Uh, but sometimes you want the sound to be hear heard everywhere. But that's when you have to apply the technique that is functional for that. But how, how if, let's say that someone was drilling over here. Mm -hmm. Could you kind of isolate that sound so we wouldn't have been disturbed by it? No, you can't really isolate it, not that, but you can camouflage sound. So you, can, so you could apply another sound, um, you could apply another sound which meant that you, the brain would think, would hear a certain experience here and you wouldn't think about the sound disturbance over there. The brain would the hear. The brain. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, getting interesting. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? No, like what happens is that when you go into a public space, like in a meeting, yeah. you have anticipations, you have thoughts, maybe you're nervous, like I was before I entered the stage. Uh, and if the sound then is disturbing or annoying you, you would have, you would, you know, your brain would notice that. Yeah. But whereas if you have a sound atmosphere that is comfortable, relaxing, soothing, then the brain would think that you have another kind of experience and then you would be... So oh. what happens with sound, which is very interesting, is that often you don't notice it until it bothers you. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you come into a public space and a chair is ugly, you would still sit down because it fills a function. Mm. But whereas if you come into a public space, there's a beautiful chair, but the sound is horrible or like the sound atmosphere, you would leave because that is the way sound affects you. It affects you emotionally. Okay, so the, the guy drilling over there, mm. you wouldn't be able to isolate that sound, but you would be able to put some kind of soundtrack to this environment here that would make us concentrate more yeah. on this sound. Um, and we have a case where we did something like that, um, where we worked with Sikla Köpkvarter, which is a uh, mall complex outside of Sweden. And when that was... Outside being of Stockholm, yeah. Yeah, it's mm, just yeah. outside of Stockholm. Yeah. Uh, and when that was being built, um, there were some shops that were already open, but half of the place was a construction site as well. So the shops that were aligning to the construction site was being suffered. So the customers that came in were being annoyed by the drilling yes. and all the noises that were being made, uh, but also the sh people that worked in the environment mm. uh, were being bothered. So we came up with the idea that we um, built a container passage, which was 30 meters long, mm -hmm. that unclosed off so you couldn't see the construction site. Uh, and then we, uh, this was an ongoing project for about a year. Uh, we interiorly decorated this entire container passage with different kinds of wallpapers that would symbolize a different season. Mm -hmm. So you would have an idea of um, that there was a different season going on. Uh, and then we would also set sound to this space. Uh, so uh, I brought a sound with me that would sort of illustrate yeah. what happened. So can we have the first sound, please? So this is somewhat what the people that came to the shops, and even when I speak, it's a bit annoying because you can't really hear what I'm saying. Thank you. Um, so what happened? <laughs> we took that sound, and then the sound that was being heard instead when you walk through the passage and around this was instead this. <laughs> and you can say, oh, thank you. Uh, and maybe you can say that's a pretty obvious thought, but it isn't because it was such, for us, it was such a difficult environment. It was out of doors. Yeah. Uh, we had a construction site. We had people, you had so many components that you had to take into consideration. Mm. Uh, so, but it worked really, really well. Mm. And after the project was finished and after the entire shopping mall was also built and we took everything down, people requested it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> they said, what happened to the sound? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so Sikla Shopkater is one of the malls that we have installed a lot of directional sound 
and different kinds of techniques. But then what happens if uh, one of the shops in Sikla Köpkvarter uh, wants to have some kind of slogan being yeah. broadcast? So you add sound to the sound that you've already added to the natural world, uh, the construction site sound. I don't really understand what you if mean. If you have the construction site, mm -hmm. you add Vivaldi yep. to that in order to block out the construction yeah. site. But then uh, a shopkeeper wants to have his own slogan on top of that, you know. Within... Yeah. yeah. Can you add that to, Viva to Vivaldi? Or uh, of course, but that, yeah? has, that, is in, like, that is in the sound production. Maybe I wouldn't suggest that was a brilliant idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> because that was not the purpose for that installation. No. Uh, but absolutely, you could do that. Okay. Maybe that would not be something that I strongly recommend. No, no, okay, <laughs> okay. That, this technique of directing sound, Yes. please tell us about that. Uh, well, directional sound is its a speaker technique, so mm. this is technical stuff. Uh, and there are various kinds of techniques that you can work with, depending on how much you want to limit the sound, if you want to spread it. Uh, and it works so that you can actually branch off sound. Okay. And you can create individual sound experiences within a space. and well, we work with everything from digital signage with screens to pure experience installations where you could just walk through a passage and then suddenly you're in something beautiful with sound or maybe a commercial message or maybe if you want some information in a bank or etc. where you don't want everyone else to hear. So obviously I'm biased, but there are so many ways you can apply sound in a positive way. Do you mean that we could actually sit here you must be alert now, Lisa, because <laughs> this is really complicated stuff. If we, uh, if we were sitting here, could we just shoot a sound yes. all across the entrance hall here at the fair? Yes. And Fantastic. the people walking into that beam of sound, yeah. they would hear it, but no one would yes. hear it standing outside yes. the beam. Yes, we do that sometimes in the office when we're bored. <laughs> 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 no, uh, yes, you can. And you can shoot, yeah, you can absolutely do that. And that would mean that we could have a speaker here and we would not be aware that the sound is being heard because the sound doesn't, you can't hear it until it hits the surface. This is all technical stuff. <laughs> you can't but hear the sound until it hits the surface. Yes. You can't hear it until you walk into the beam yes. and it hits you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what yeah. explodes the sound. Which so is one form of technique. There are others as well. Uh, and yeah, so that is... And where does this technique come from? Um, well, we... Um, well, there, there are two kinds of techniques. One technique is actually uh, based on radar, like not radar, but based on, um, how do you say it, piracy, that they actually said to pirates in the sea, you shoot out an ultra beam sound saying, um, we see you, drop your guns. And if they didn't, they would have a very hard ultra beam sound that would sort of freeze you, if that explains it. But then they realized that this can also be made and adapt this to a public environment. You can actually use this to branch off sound. Uh, so they applied that form of yeah. ultrasound technology into a speaker that you could apply in this kind of space. What are you saying? That you shoot sound, uh, almost killing off the pirates out on that boat we over there? We don't kill them. <laughs> that you just make them Heat deaf? Them. Yeah, no, not deaf. You, huh? um, it is a very high ultrasound beam which makes that you, you freeze up. You yeah. Yeah, sort of. No, I, I can't really explain it because obviously we don't work with that kind of weaponry. Don't. It's not my area. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes. It's that's an intriguing area, though. It is an intriguing. <laughs> well, we don't work with fighting pirates at Lexter. We're magicians. Okay, okay. Mm, but it would be, wouldn't that be a perfect alternative to bombs? Really? I mean, wouldn't that be superb? Yes. Instead of mm. blowing up bombs, you yeah, could just shoot, and and shoot yeah. sound. Yeah. <laughs> you could have wild growing plants yes, uh, <laughs> growing all over those, uh, yeah. the enemy. It seems like a nicer way. Yes, yeah. let's do it. So it's, it's, a, it's a technique that comes from the military. That, that form of technique. But then there are other kinds as well that are, that are not necessarily functioning in that way. No. Which means that you can have the same kind of sound level for a distance up to 30 meters. Mm -hmm. Which means that you don't have to put up the speaker extremely high just to get your message across. Okay. So there are various techniques that we apply in different ways depending on what the client needs. Who are the clients? Well, we work, work with all sorts. We work here at the fair, for example. We've installed all the sound uh, design in the entrance and also produced that sound. Okay. Uh, we work with museums, uh, big shopping malls, but we work mainly conceptually. Uh, we walk in and we see l an entire picture, like we grasp an entire picture of what is needed here in order, uh, in order to make the sound efficient and work and a nice meeting space. Mm. Uh, so we work with everything from the technical 
to the content, to project management, and to the idea of the sound. Mm. In an ordinary office, how, what could that be? Oh, in an ordinary office, you could, for example, for the receptionist, for the people that are in the way, let's say that this is the waiting area and the receptionist is over there, then we would have a sound experience, but the receptionist would not hear it, which means that also that the people working in the environment 10 hours a day don't necessarily need to be absolutely bored of what is being no. heard. Because that is something that you encounter that, for example, in shops, etc., that the people that work there, being, they're fed up, so they turn everything off. Mm. Because they're like, oh, I can't be dealt with this. Mm. Whereas this technique allows you to have, the message is only heard by the one that the message is intended for. Mm. I'm thinking of these people sitting in cashiers at Ica, whatever, yeah. they bim, bim, bim yeah. all the time. They could. <laughs> yeah, but, but we work with we work with City Gross. Okay. So we, we have like our sound concept is incorporated in every new City Gross that is being opened. Okay. Which means that if I'm the cashier and you are buying stuff for me, let's say water, and um, you come in and you would have a sound experience for the entire way where you're queuing up. Okay. Whereas yeah. I don't hear that. And we tried different kinds of. Um, we tried when we did the first City Gross. There were nine different kind of lines where you could queue up. And we set sound to three of them, mm. and just to see what happened. And there were different kinds of sound experiences. And obviously, because this is a new kind of technique and a new kind uh, of working area, really, uh, we were checking up and everything, seeing like if the cashiers were happy. And the effect was that the cashiers uh, A were really pleased, and B they wanted to be in work in those cues where there was music or where there was sound because the customer tended to be more ha happy, uh, peaceful and not as stressed mm -hmm. because they had a different kind of experience on their way. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good result. Mm -hmm. So it's almost, it's a bit like what you do too. It's a, yeah. it's a way no. of strengthening the trademark yes. too of, uh, yeah. of the yeah. company. Yeah. Yes. And caring all again. Absolutely. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Caring will uh, have to be our final word, but yes, it's a very nice yeah, word to finish nice off word. with, I think. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, thank Lisa Vaclin. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And Van thank, you. thank you. And thank you for coming. She's walking down the street. Jump in your game Hello, I love you Won't you tell me your name Hello, I love you Let me jump in